many of you may have seen that picture of Mamata Banerjee with a bandage on her head and lying down. That was for many a turning around movement, not just for Mamata Banerjee, for those who even did not know her as far as West Bengal politics goes. Cut to the present scene where we saw Mamata Banerjee dashing across to Birbhum district to that particular village where violence took place. And there's a reason why she rushed there. There's also a reason why she has been apprehensive. I'm Pallavi Ghosh and this week on One Take, we asked this question, is there political violence which is so akin or synonymous with the political history or journey of Mamata Banerjee going to be a turnaround moment as far as West Bengal politics goes or even as far as a political journey hence on for Mamata Banerjee, especially towards 2024? Well, I'm going to cut back to history. 1990, Hazra Mora, the heart of Kolkata, and many of us who are from there understand how important that particular crossing is as far as politics of West Bengal is concerned. Now, in 1990, she was hit on the head, uh, on her skull actually, it was injured, fractured, and she was in bed in hospital for more than a month. Those who did not even know who Mamta Banerjee was all about, actually, she became a household name. At that point of time, Bengal Congress used to boast of stalwarts like Abdul Ghani Khan Chaudhary or even Priya Ranjan Das Munshi. Mamata Banerjee emerged on the scene and how. She defeated Shomna Chatterjee, who was a big wig in the next Lok Sabha elections. Of course, she lost the one in 1989, but already, in a sense, history had been created. You know, it's also very interesting that Hazra Moor, which is centre of Kolkata, is also very close to where her residence is in Kaligarh which is again a very famous religious spot in West Bengal, in Kolkata specifically, and close to where she stays and where she operates from, and where much of her politics actually runs from. From then on, Hazra Crossing or Hazra Moor, as it's called, that violence, those pictures, have become integral to the politics of Mamata Banerjee and the Trinamool Congress. In fact, if you go to a newly built DMC office in Kolkata, you will see lots of hoardings which have been put up and they are dominated by this particular pictures of Mamta Banerjee lying down on a hospital bed with that bandage on her head. She emerged and projected herself as a street fighter, someone who would take on the men, the wolves as she would call them and the Trinamool Congress called them and this has now become a part of a political journey and narrative. 1993 again she was attacked when she was actually leading a procession through writers building which is at that point of time the headquarters and also the bastion of the left for her the political journey meant unseating the left something which many thought for years especially those living in west bengal a completely impossible feat but she did it then you cut to shingur and nandigram which actually was a turnaround moment in which, you know, the violence against the villagers over there was used by her to hit out at the left government to say, look, they don't care for the poor villagers or the Kisan. And Nandigram, Shingul, is very much a part of the political biography of Mamata Banerjee. She understands what violence does when it comes to the political future or the journey of any neta. She has often used it effectively to her advantage. I remember in the last uh, assembly elections of West Bengal, when the BJP was actually breathing down her neck and she was worried, the TMC was of course worried that would the BJP actually unseat her. It was a do or die battle for Mamata Banerjee and for the Trinamool Congress. Nande Gram was being contested opposite her was Shubhendu Adhikari who at one point of time was the closest aide and a man who in a sense built up the Nande Gram agitation and Nande Gram as well. No one understood every nook and corner of Nande Gram as much as Shubhendu Adhikari did. Again, cut to that picture which came out towards the fag end of the election campaign of Mamata Banerjee actually campaigning in Nandigram and how her foot got injured. It was blown up into a big political issue. There were make several memes made by the TMC. They came out with cartoons, they came out with animation films and also projected her as a Bengal tigress. In fact, the Khala Hobe slogan of Trinamool Congress was given a new meaning when they showed her fractured foot over a football to show that she is going to be undaunted by the injury. She would campaign and hop across from various spots with that uh, fractured leg just to make the point that, you know, I am not going to sit down quietly. How I have been targeted by the so-called goons of the BJP and I am that street fighter which I always have been. 
If anyone understands what political violence or any violence can do to one's politics, I think to a large extent Mamata Banerjee understands this very, very well. Which is why I'm cutting back to the president. This is what my one take is all about. And I'm asking this question, of course, this week is that is that violence which took place in the Birbhum village going to be a turnaround moment? Too early to say that because many would dismiss it off as a one-off thing. But you know, there are a couple of things over here. I'm also going to compare it to the recent uh, state poll results. Now, in case of Uttar Pradesh, when analysis has been done and statistics have come out, one of the major factors which worked against Akhilesh Yadav and which was used effectively by the BJP during its campaign is what they call the Gunda Gardi Raj, which would be back if Akhilesh comes back to power. You know, at the end of the day, the common man wants it, the businessmen want it, investments won't happen, schools, colleges, infrastructure can only flourish when there is peace, when there is no major law and order problem. And law and order, of course, became one of the key issues as far as the UP elections are concerned. Cut back to West Bengal because I'm focusing on Bengal and Mamata Banerjee's politics this week is there are many reasons why she would be apprehensive and worried. First, she's very open about the fact that 2024 is going to be her game. She thinks it could be a Kala Hobby moment. If you remember her victory speech, which she gave again at Kalighat, after the results pouring, giving her a massive win, she was actually speaking in Hindi. It was a well thought out strategy. She was obviously trying to build forward a national narrative, reach out to a non-Bengali or Bangla speaking population and also addressing herself to the North Indian vote bank, which is what is the Hindi vote bank is called. So that's the reason why it matters to her and you know she made her national ambitions very very clear. So what happens in Bengal today she knows could have an impact on her national ambitions for 2024. The BJP will and can effectively use it against her saying that someone who cannot guarantee peace in her state, if she cannot be a chief minister who can bring law and order in the state, can she really be trusted with holding the reins of the national power or be one of the key players as far as the opposition front or opposition politics for 2024 is concerned. Mamata Banerjee also understood that just as she used it effectively against her opponents in West Bengal, this is something which can be used effectively against her as far as the 2024 elections are concerned, which is why, wasting no time, she rushes to the spot and she makes it very clear that I have told the police that the guilty must be arrested, which is exactly what happened. Unfortunately for her, the spanner in the works came in when the Kolkata High Court actually ordered that there should be a CBI inquiry into this entire incident, which means now the entire issue has occupied centre stage. The CBI is going to do a part, non-partisan investigation. The matter will be kept on the boil. We already saw pictures, for example, inside the West Bengal Assembly when there were almost open cuffs between, scuffle between the BJP as well as the Trinamool Congress MLAs. Pictures don't look good. Pictures sends out a message that is she not in control? Is she not able to control the law and order situation in the state? So that could become the next big narrative in 2024. The second important thing is she's looking at investments because now having come back to power, promised jobs, and again, I'm going to say it's going to be linked to 2024 because that's something which Arvind Kejriwal understood. Unemployment is a big issue. It's all very well to talk about unemployment and rising prices against the Modi government. But what are you delivering? Are you going to be able to give infrastructure development and jobs to your own people? For that, she needs investment from the corporate sector. You know, the corporate sector is going to shy away from investing in a state which does not guarantee peace or law and order. Which is why one of the states in which you are finding big investments is down south, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana to a very great extent, Gujarat for example. Because the businessmen are businessmen, they are looking at money and therefore they want peace and therefore they want to shy away from Bengal. That's again a narrative which was used by the BJP in Uttar Pradesh. When they try to reach out to corporates, say that if Akhilesh Yadav comes back to power, once again a Gunda Raj would mean no one would want to invest. And therefore for Mamata Banerjee, Political violence, or at least sending out a message that I'm having a grip on the law and order and I'm not wasting time in rushing to the spot and ensuring it myself. Well, that was the reason why she went there. Otherwise, it came as a surprise to many that for one incident, even when there's no election around the corner immediately, 
the chief minister herself dashes there, meets the people in the hospital, speaks to the villagers and also says that police officers and all of them and those who are guilty, who are not found taking control of the situation, must either be arrested or face action. Someone who understands that violence can be used to your advantage politically and she has done that as a part of a political journey, she wouldn't want to give that edge to her political opponents. Well, that's as far as our ambitions goes. To cut back to the original question, could it be the beginning of our undoing? I would say it's still very early. But you know, in politics, it's all about building up a narrative. It goes unchecked if there are more such similar incidents. It's certainly going to bring up a perception that Mamta Banerjee is one person who's not in charge. This, along with this entire argument and debate that Abhishek Banerjee is calling the shots, she's losing her grip. You know, another four and a half years is not too far away. Amamta Banerjee, who is out of Bengal, who cannot win over this narrative in states like Tripura, where there is a substantial Bengali presence, if she is not very successful electorally in other state elections, it's going to be a huge setback to her national ambitions. And therefore, I would conclude by saying, and do give in your reactions on this, that this political incident or this law and order situation which arose is a kind of a wake-up call to Mamata Banerjee. It could actually mean the beginning of another political journey, both for her and for her political opponents, not just in West Bengal, but at the national level as well. Do give in your reactions on the social media timeline. Thank you so much for watching.